it's the next day, and uh, there's a gas shortage in Western North Carolina. <laughs> I'm gonna step back a little here, show you what's going on. Jason and I are saving a little fuel by carpooling in his mother-in-law's minivan, and uh, we got the generator in the back, everything we need, and we're saving, <laughs> saving some fuel. Because I don't know if I can get any more is the problem. And I live like an hour from the Nantahala Retreat. And let's let's get to work then, buddy. <laughs> Driver, <laughs> Nantahala Retreat, please. Check out all the cool lights on the dashboard. Oh, it's every... <laughs> okay. And it smells like gas in here. This is a ticking time bomb. <laughs> NOC. Hey, don't tell me where to go. I want to see if I can do this on my own. I'm going to tell you if you take a wrong turn, I'm not riding in this <laughs> minivan one more second than I have to. I know, but I think I got it, dude. I paid All attention right. yesterday. We'll see. What? <laughs> Why are we reversing Shut right up. Now? I don't know. <laughs> I forgot about that last lap. <laughs> Get that camera off of me. Today's project is to put this number five steel in the footings. This 5 8 rebar will reinforce the concrete footings and it's not required by code around here, but as a builder, this is super cheap insurance to make sure the foundation will be rock solid forever. Concrete does pretty well under compression, which is a stress that squeezes, but it's pretty terrible when it comes to tensile strength, which is a force that would wanna pull the concrete apart. The steel helps the concrete footing bridge over any soft spots in the soil and gives it that tensile strength it needs to do that. We don't have power out here, but we need power because we need to use our big metal chopper saw. So we're gonna be using a new tool from Northern Tool and Equipment, this Power Horse 7000 ES generator with electric start. I've always wanted my own generator and up to this point, I've always had to borrow my dad's. This makes me feel like less than my brother who has his own huge generator. So thank you to Northern Tool and Equipment. We're gonna really enjoy having a portable power station that we can take with us anywhere and use on our job sites. All right, man, let's fire this thing up. You said it was electric start. Oh, it is. I I just didn't get a battery yet. So um, over here, you can also pull start it, which is really nice. Whoa! First pull. <laughs> Woo, baby! We got to do this sewer clean out. We're gonna go right here because it's the softest soil. We won't be in front of the uh, door. We don't want to clean out in front of the door and we can go right between these footings and into the end of the tank over there. Only problem is, you know what? Yeah. Traco keys in my truck, not the minivan. <laughs> so, sorry. Traco right here, bro. We're gonna put that, we're gonna dig that in and that's gotta get done before the concrete. We're using a six inch sewer sleeve here because we need to run a four inch sewer line through this thing later since we have three or more toilets, that's the code. And it needs to be down deep like this not for freezing or anything, it's just so that we can get the fall we need from the far end of the house down to here and make sure everything runs downhill. I bring you a putt. Bro! You have to make that hole bigger. <laughs> You're good. Look how long this thing is. Stomp it in there. I didn't know you spoke Spanish. Oh, habla espanol <laughs> un poquito. What's going on? <laughs> oh, Celsius. <laughs> 19 degrees Celsius. What is going on Dude, with this Dude, my father-in-law tried to fix it and uh, uh, he made it Spanish. <laughs> Por favor, a 100 metros, gire a la derecha. <laughs> did you catch that? I did not. De la derecha is right. Is that what it means? It. Yep. Really? Yeah. Wow. Ahora a la derecha. Now I turn right. Yeah. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> yeah. Cuando pueda, de la vuelta. <laughs> what? Was know. that left or right? The next morning started early at five in the morning. I had to get down to Bryson City and prep some J-bars for our concrete pour, which they like to pour concrete early in the morning if you didn't know. 
I want to take a second to thank one of our title sponsors of this series, Jennings Builder Supply. And they service all of Western North Carolina with any kind of building material. We've been working with Jennings and the same guy, Jerry, for over 20 years. They've been hauling us lumber to some of the most remote and rugged locations in all of Western North Carolina. Thank you to Jennings Builder Supply. Once I made it down to Jamie's shop in Bryson City, we started working on our J-bars. What we're doing is adding a foot to the bottom of these. It's a number six J-bar, which is basically a piece of steel with a 90 degree bend in it. Part of the steel will stick up into our wall. Now I'm usually able to buy these prefabbed with the foot somewhere and it makes them a lot easier to dry set the J-bar instead of sticking it in the wet concrete where you need it. You can stick it before you pour concrete. People aren't gonna pay you to wear their stuff I if know. your beard's gonna cover I gotta, it. You know, <laughs> send me hats, not shirts. <laughs> Hey guys, make sure to bring some extra zip ties just in case the whole welding thing didn't work out because Eric was just going to zip tie that leg on the thing. Okay. But, you know, just in case the welds break. I don't know what's wrong with zip ties. Zip ties can do anything and duct tape. Pretty much do anything. Get some coffee! What? Coffee! NOC. first step for setting these J-bars is to actually locate the structure again with our reference pins and our string lines. Once we had that done, we could actually start locating the J-bars. And they need to be placed really exactly, actually. They need to be four inches in from the outside of the walls and then four feet on center from that. And that way they come up in the cores of our block. That's really important that it hits the cores. The shorter horizontal leg of these J-bars will be poured into the concrete on the footing and then the longer leg sticking up will be tied into our wall with the concrete grouting. This will help the wall not get pushed across the footing with the weight of the unbalanced fill that's going to be behind this wall. Aren't Irish people known for being really good at like driving stakes like for the railroad or something? Isn't I that think a thing? So. I think it's Irish. They're really like if you're the guy holding the, the rod, you want the guy hitting it to be Irish. I mean, I could be wrong. Wow. I want to say this is one way you could do it. In residential construction, you can actually just wet set the J-bar into the concrete. You can't do that in commercial because the inspector wants to see it. You can also just tie these J-bars to your horizontal steel that's in the footing and then brace them with a number four steel across all the tops to hold them vertical. So this is one way you can do it. We were just beating those stakes into the rock, you know? And I was like, man, why did we even weld these? We should just use zip ties. Would have been fine. Yeah. What I think a, so. What a waste. <laughs> <laughs> Whose side are you on here? Zip tie or welding? Uh, I, will, I, will, I, I thought zip tape would have been better. Well, so you sound like you're on my side. I mean, zip, zip, you know. <laughs> <laughs> About five minutes after we actually got ready for the concrete, the concrete was here. Unfortunately for the drivers, they had to back about a mile <laughs> down a single lane road in their concrete trucks because you can't turn around on this site in a truck as big as a concrete truck. These guys from Southern Concrete are pretty used to this, I gather, from working in the mountains and they did a great job. Since there's no good way to actually get the concrete truck down the hill to where the footings are, we had to use a concrete pumper to get the concrete from the truck down the bank into the footings. And they're pouring this on a number six slump, and a slump is a measure of how stiff the concrete is. Number six is nice because it actually flows just a little bit like water. It levels nicely, but it also cures super hard, and that's what we're looking for. Pro tip of the day is we like to actually use a screed board on our footings to ensure that they are actually level with no humps, low spots or high spots. So when we lay the first row of block, it goes down nice and easy. And a great tip for safety, even if you're just a DIYer, use rebar caps on top of your vertical steel and that would keep you from getting impaled if you fell on it, which is a good thing. The 
concrete we're using here is a 3000 PSI pump mix. It means it's made to go through a concrete pump like we're using. It has smaller aggregate than regular concrete. We used 12 yards of concrete here, and a yard is a measurement of cubic volume. It is 27 cubic feet, came on two trucks. Woo! You know, it's hard to believe that thing fit in there. It's a sponge, bro. It's like a square peg in a round hole. <laughs> <laughs> we did go around and double check the placement of these J-bars because like I said if they come up in the wrong spot it's a real hassle. The front part of this house that does not have these J-bars sticking up is not getting a basement wall. We'll simply pour the slab and then frame an exterior wall on top of that. We will have anchor bolts coming out of the slab to tie that wall down to the footing. After letting the concrete cure for just a couple hours, we were able to actually get out on it. So we decided to go ahead and pin the corners and set up our speed lead poles for laying the block. On a couple of the corners, our string lines were actually close enough down to the footing where we could just set a block in the corner and then use it to plumb down and mark the corner on our footing. We also pulled tapes, checked all of the numbers, checked all of the diagonals to make sure that everything's perfect because it is way, 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 way easier to build a house on a foundation that is perfectly square and level. That's right on it. 44, four and seven eighths. After all of the corners were located, I pulled up the blocks and marked the corner by just pushing a nail into this green concrete. We can actually use that later to hook string lines on to lay the one row of header block across this front. On the back two corners, I marked the location for our speed poles, which is outside of the corner. Then our string lines will get run on the inside of this pole in both directions at varying heights to basically give us a straight line to lay the block on on every single course. Each of these poles is held plumb with two braces that are just C-clamped to the top of the pole and braced down to stakes on the ground. In case you're not familiar with this type of setup, the advantage is that you don't have to lay up block corners to hook your lead lines on to fill in between the two corners with the rest of the block. Using lead poles like this also makes it easier to run horizontal steel in our block work like we're gonna do because we can run one row at a time all the way around instead of building up corners, then having to weave the steel back into the corner later. In our next video, you'll see us going around to mark the height of each course of block on each one of these poles so that we don't have to do any thinking at all while we're laying block. We just lay the block to the line. A couple of the stakes for our braces actually came down right in the footing but since the concrete's green, we just drove the stake right through it and that'll hold fine. Another advantage of doing this right away. Hey, you know what mountain that is with the pole sticking up? Yeah, that's a uh, tater knob. What? Tater knob. Tater knob. Yeah. <laughs> You're making that up. No. Yo, Peak Finder says that's Jackson Lawn Mountain. You're not from here, are you, bub? No, but Peak Finder don't lie. Dude, Peak Finder don't know. That's, that's tater knob. <laughs> Dude, you make so much stuff up. That's tater knob. That's blah, blah, blah. That's... Yeah, you know what that is over there? That's tomato knob over there. Exactly. All right, let's go home. You can't believe me. <laughs>with our concrete in the ground and our speed lead pole set, it's time to kick off, enjoy some good company and good food down by the river. Thanks for building with us today, and we'll see you on the next one.